Over the last couple of months, I've been more and more getting into some Star Trails photography. Star Trails are an awesome addition to the astrophotography world, and over long time lapses and image sequences, you can capture the rotation of the Earth in a night sky. Star Trails is a really fun and easy way to expand yourself a bit in astrophotography, and they are very rewarding images to create too because there are just so many ways you can capture them. Hi everyone, my name is Noah and welcome back to the channel. It is so good to say that now after quite a few months of being absent on YouTube. Today I'll be going through some of the steps and processes to creating Star Trails images as well as showing some bits and pieces from the imaging session as well. Star Trails are some of my absolute favorite images to create in astrophotography, so I'm super pumped to be making this video for all you today. Alright, I think we're done. Let's get into the video. Okay, so what are star trails exactly? Well, star trails can be created when you leave your camera outside for many hours to the entire night, and you leave this running for a time lapse, and you can capture the apparent rotation of the night sky. Because we are all on Earth, and Earth is spinning on its axis, no matter what point you are on Earth's surface, as the Earth spins through space, a distant star or constellation will come out of you or have shifted. That's why the sun and moon rise and set during the day, and that's also why the stars appear to change positions during the night. For star trails, if you leave your camera outside taking many, many exposures, or such as a time lapse, you can stitch these photos together to form one image that shows the arc or movement of the stars throughout the night. In the case for star trails, they are super fun to create and super rewarding at the end. And they are also very easy for beginners because it's a fairly easy aspect of the hobby to actually wrap your head around. <laughs> With everything in astrophotography, a good foundation is key and a good tripod will definitely serve you well when shooting star trails. Now the tripod doesn't have to be super fancy or specific, just a good tripod that has sturdy legs will do you well. Because we're shooting star trails over many hours throughout the night, it's important that our tripod is very sturdy and there is no wobbleness within the camera. Because if there is, that can cause some serious issues to our star trails images and we might not be able to actually create the full star trails effect. For tripods, I just recommend extending the legs fully and making sure that the tripod legs are as far as apart to increase your foundation. Although there's a bit of controversy online to whether this is actually a good thing, just make sure your tripod is actually sturdy. And if it isn't, you can always hang a bag full of some water or weight to weigh down the tripod a bit in the ground. For the camera setup, there really isn't a whole lot to this. A DSLR works beautifully for Star Trails images, but you can actually just use your mobile phone to capture Star Trails, which is pretty cool. For your phone, you can download special apps on the App Store that will allow you to use the full manual capabilities of your camera, or you can take longer exposures, and I've heard it worked pretty well. For me though, I usually use uh, my Canon T7i camera, which is DSLR. As far as does the camera need to be Astro modified, I'd say no to that, actually. I've captured all my Star Trails images with no astro modification and a normal filter inside my Canon T7i. <laughs> because we're just capturing the stars and no nebulae, astro modification really isn't needed for this kind of astrophotography. As for the lens you can attach your DSLR to, there's a whole wide range of options you can choose from. I personally choose to opt for the wider lenses. I personally use my Rokinon 14mm lens, which on my crop sensor DSLR works perfectly to give me a nice region of sky to photograph. Obviously you can use different lenses though, and I've seen awesome images captured at higher focal lengths. Just know that the wider you go, the more arc or trails your stars will have, because the further you zoom into your object, the more straight your 
star trails lines will look. You can absolutely create awesome star trails with just a DSLR or phone on a tripod, but there are a few key accessories that will make the whole experience better and will enhance your astrophotography with star trails. One of those accessories is an inner vlometer. Now these are good for DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. What these inner volumeters do is that they will plug into one of the accessory ports on your DSLR and you can program the settings on your inner volumeter to take longer exposures above usually the 30 second limit set on most DSLRs. And the most important thing about these inner volumeters is you can program a sequence where it'll take multiple exposures back to back. Rather than just taking one exposure, it'll take exposures until maybe the battery dies which is a huge key important thing about star trails, which is important to take note of. Another super important accessory to have for star trails is a dew heater or dew band. These we normally use with deep sky astrophotography with telescopes to prevent dew from forming on the lens. But the same is true for star trails. Dew or frost can form on the lens after being outside for a long amount of time. And the dew heater or dew band will help act to warm the lens above the dew point, which helps prevent any dew or any frost from forming in the lens, keeping your images crystal clear. This last one's optional, but I highly recommend it if you want to get more serious into star trails, and that is a dummy battery or AC battery system for your camera. These dummy batteries actually plug into the wall or your house and will deliver DC power to your camera that can power it all night long. These are super important because rather than the standalone battery that your DSLR comes in, these will power your camera all night long and will prevent the battery from dying on you. In my experience, the standalone batteries on the Canon camera, at least mine, has lasted around three and a half hours to four hours, which is perfect for star trails. But if you're looking to go longer than that, you're really gonna need one of these dummy batteries. For the best locations and time to shoot star trails, there isn't a whole lot to consider here. But some important things to take note are the cloud cover, the bordal scales, the moon, and the season you want to shoot the star trails in. The most important thing about shooting star trails is to make sure that there are no clouds absolutely anywhere. The clouds will definitely ruin your star trails, as when clouds come over your images, as you stack your images, those clouds will persist through the final stack. There is no substitution. You can't, we can't take one image from the beginning of the session and stack it with one image at the end of the session because then we'll have, we won't have the complete trailed image. For looking at cloud cover and cloud forecast, I really recommend the app Clear Outside. It gives you some wonderful data on cloud cover at all different levels throughout the atmosphere. And it does a great job of visualizing what the clear sky forecast is for you. Bordal scale and mood illumination are also important things to take note, but these aren't actually super important to actually photographing star trails. For me personally, I take most of my star trails images from just outside my backyard, which is Bordal 6. And actually for this imaging session, that was under almost a 100% moon. So you definitely don't need to be anywhere dark or with zero moon to shoot star trails. You really can do it anywhere you want. This gives a lot of creative freedom to you and you can just play around with it and you can use your camera to photograph different things and use different things for composition and you can just be fun with it. Equipment when shooting star trails is really important but perhaps more important than that is the actual camera settings used to capture them. There are really three main types of settings to be aware of, at least on DSLR users, and that would be ISO, f-stop, and the exposure time you take of star trails. I'm going to try to explain these as simple and fast as I possibly can, so let's get into it. Okay, so starting off with exposure time, that is probably one of the most important settings to keep aware of, and it really, really can determine how your star trails looks in the end. There are really two different ways you can shoot star trails using this setting. You can either take multiple short exposures or you can just take a couple or maybe one really long exposure. Now you may be wondering why would we take multiple short exposures 
where we could just take one long one. And there are a few key differences I'll try to explain. With one mega long exposure on your camera, the stars will definitely trail and you will get the effect. The few downsides to this method though, is that the camera will be taking exposures for maybe hours. And when the camera is like this, it is super sensitive to any vibrations. And if there's any sort of vibrations within the camera or the tripod, your entire exposure or entire work will be ruined just like that. You can definitely get away with using just one exposure for star trails, but I like the shorter exposure and taking multiple files method a little better. And I'm gonna tell you why. The reason why I love shooting multiple short exposures for star trails is you get a bit more flexibility when shooting. For me, I personally try to keep my exposures around 30 seconds to maybe a minute. So in each individual frame, the stars are pretty much pinpoint and circular, and you basically end up with many, many hundreds of files in the end. I like to do it this way just in case there is maybe a meteor or something very important that goes through the frame during my imaging session. And if that's the case, I can just take that specific frame out of my star trail sequence and make it an image of its own. I also like to shoot multiple short exposures because if there's any sort of plane or object that passes through the frame, it's much easier to delete that plane through that one exposure and then stack your sequence rather than taking one huge long exposure and then trying to remove that plane. You can totally do both ways, but I think it just comes down to personal preference. F-stop or F-speed is another important setting to keep aware of if you're a DSLR user. And if you do astrophotography, you may be tempted to crank your F-stop to the lowest or shallowest it goes, maybe to F2.8 or F1.4. However, with star trails, you're not always limited to just F2.8. You can shoot at different f-stops as well. The biggest thing with f-speed and f-stop is the chromatic aberration it leaves around the stars or the color fringing on the edges of the stars it leaves. With shallower depth of fields and lower f-stops, that chromatic aberration will be greater and there will be more artifacts on the edges of the stars. This is an entirely huge issue, at least with my Rokinon 14 millimeter lens, but it is something to keep aware of. I personally find when I stack my final images that the chromatic aberration isn't a whole lot big of a deal and it only enhances the star colors and brings them out a bit better. ISO is a bit more important topic when discussing star trail settings. For my ISO, I usually like to keep it relatively low actually, around 100 to 200. Sometimes I do crank it up to maybe 400 or 1600, but I like to keep my ISO as low as possible actually. I like to keep my ISOs low because lower ISOs tend to have higher dynamic ranges in your camera. High dynamic range means there are greater differences between the highlights and the lowlights of your image. You can capture both the highlights of the sky and the dark areas in the foreground in one shot. Because I live in the light pollution of my Bortle 6 skies, I can easily get away with leaving my ISO at 100 and I can just change my other settings to accommodate for that. Please everyone, do not stress about all your camera settings and quite honestly, if you're taking pictures of the stars and you can see them popping up on your screen, you're going to get star trails. Trust me. However, the reason why I brought all these settings up is so you can judge for yourself whether what settings are the best for you to choose. If there's one tip I would recommend for when you're shooting star trails and adjusting your settings, it would be to do not blow out your stars. It may seem simple, but I feel like it's a bit overlooked with this type of astrophotography. The stars in the night sky are very bright, and even though they may not appear that way on your camera, they're usually very small pinpoint dots of light that can blow out the pixels that are being captured on your sensor. The stars in the night sky have colors as well, and if you really want to bring out those colors in post-processing, which is what I like to do, you don't want to oversaturate the pixels of the stars in your camera. The histogram on your camera can be a great way of measuring how the exposure is on your particular camera. I like to keep my histogram around one third, maybe one fourth of the full histogram. However, don't make your uh, images too dark because in post-processing, when you wanna brighten those images up, it can lead to artifacts showing up. Now with a bit of camera settings out of the way, I'm gonna take you guys outside in the field a few nights ago when I was photographing the star trails. Hi everyone, I am back outside in the backyard 
it is so good to say that now because the last time I was out here filming a YouTube video was, I believe, back in September, <laughs> which is kind of crazy to think about. Tonight, I'm going to be doing a bit of Star Trails photography. I'm going to show you some of the camera settings and tips and tricks on how I create some of my Star Trails images using just a DSLR and tripod. Right now, it's about negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit, or that is about negative 21 degrees Celsius, which is definitely not the coldest Minnesota gets, but that's pretty darn cold to be out here doing an imaging video. <laughs> So tonight I have my DSLR Star Trail rig set up right here. It is uh, my Canon T7i DSLR on just the top of a tripod. My plan tonight is to shoot Star Trails near the North Celestial Pole, which is by Polaris. It's the point the Earth rotates around, and I'm hoping to get some nice Star Trails that kind of form an arc or circle around the North Celestial Pole, where Polaris is. It is early in the night and it's only about 7 o'clock, so I should be able to get 8 to 10 hours worth of exposure time if everything goes to plan. And I plan to use all that time imaging just the star trails. Now let me hop over to the camera and I'll show you a bit of the settings I'll be using tonight and how I have everything configured. Okay, so here are my camera settings I'll be using to shoot some star trails. So I am in manual mode and I am using bulb feature. The bulb feature is important so my intervalometer will be able to set the correct time scales to my camera. My uh, aperture is f8. It is crazy bright under the suburban night skies that I just had to make my aperture really low which is fine. My ISO is the lowest it goes which is 100 and probably the most important thing here is I am shooting in RAW. RAW is super duper important because you can adjust the color balance and you can stretch the data further in post-processing. As for my intervalometer, I have the exposure time set to 30 seconds and I have an interval as low as it can go which is one second and I'm taking as many of these as I possibly can. Anyways, that's pretty much it with the camera settings I'll be using tonight. Now I'm going to go hurry up and get this sequence started and get inside to the worm. <laughs> I'll see you guys then. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed this style of video and found this tutorial useful in some way. And I hope it has inspired you, in, even in a little bit, to just try out some star trails for yourself. As of when I'm filming this, my YouTube channel just is shy of half a million total views, which is absolutely incredible to think about. I can't even begin to thank you all so much for watching and liking my content and I'm just so honored I've been able to reach such a huge audience. This video has been a long time coming as I haven't really made any videos since September but I really hope to get into more of it this year. Until then, stay safe, happy viewing, and as always, clear skies. <laughs>